So why did we get a Suron X? That's coming right up. Hey everyone, my name is Rick Cordero. Welcome to Run Playback, where we help you with video and tech tips to lead a more efficient and affordable lifestyle. Let's be creative and save money at the same time. Today we're gonna to talk about the 2021 Suron X Black Edition electric bike distributed by Lunacycle here in the US. The Suron is one of the most popular electric bikes out right now, next to the Onyx RCR and Super 73. From its dirt bike inspired design aesthetic to its powerful mid-drive motor, the Suron X is for those who crave off-roading more than street riding. Despite providing the most bang for the buck in terms of performance, the Suron has been a target for those concerned about strict e-bike regulations due to their popularity on the streets. In this video, we'll discuss the features and let you know whether the Suron X is worth the price. And just a reminder, our goal is to always be unbiased and transparent with our opinions. This video is not endorsed or sponsored by Lunacycle. So let's get to it. So now we have three bikes in our collection, our 72 volt Super 73 Z1, our Onyx RCR, and now the Suron X Black Edition. While the Super 73 and Onyx put a lot of emphasis on street legal aesthetics, the Suron X is unabashedly an off-road vehicle. Suron owners are mainly off-road riders and thrill seekers, but that isn't exactly why we wanted to get our hands on a Suron. We're actually more interested in converting our Suron into a supermoto vehicle since most of our riding is on the street. The futuristic aggressive design and the off-road suspension is the perfect base for the kind of ride we're looking for. If that sounds like you, then the Suron X is one of the coolest and most thrilling electric vehicles you'll ever ride. There's a bunch of videos on YouTube that actually show you how to put this thing together. So we won't do any step-by-step -step instructions. Hopefully it doesn't take too long to install. All right, so. This is pretty cool. This is like a cardboard bike stand. So make sure you want to save all that stuff. Appliques, these are decals. Cardboard padding. So we'll just cut the zip tie off here. It looks really cool. <laughs> Very excited to ride this thing. Padding is uh, nicely secured on the bike. I think they really got good at manufacturing these things and shipping these things and packaging these things. These things were a lot cheaper if I ordered them earlier, but it's all good. They're still relatively cheap for the amount of features that you get. It looks like it comes with the fast ace fork. I think this is the inverted fork. Depending on what setup videos you watch on YouTube, it seems like everyone has a different fork or padding. This is the throttle right here. On the box it says to install the throttle before you put the handlebars on because they don't want you to rip the throttle out. As you cut these zip ties off, just make sure that you don't scratch anything. No idea what these are for. Well, we'll set them aside. Looks like the fork bolt also came off, probably during transport. This is the charger. Cut the zip ties off here. So pedal was installed on one side and not the other side. Keys are right here. Take the battery out. So the battery and the electronics are not connected. The breaker is off. And then we just pull the battery out. All right, so we cleaned up our work area a little bit. This is the charger and the battery. We'll start charging the battery now so we could do a test ride later. You could see that they have one pedal installed. So this is the Fast Ace inverted fork. Looking at it before everything is installed, it's just the quality is really nice. I love the texture of the seat. I think the angles and everything about it looks super futuristic. I thought the wheels would be bigger. I'm actually kind of pleased that these 19 inch wheels are not as big as I thought they would be. I am thinking about doing like the Supermoto conversion kit. You know, maybe we'll get plated. There's like a space to put plates right here. If I want to turn into a moped, I will have to get indicators. I don't know how I'd mount that. All right, so let's uh, continue our installation. 
So from payment to delivery, it took about seven days because LunaCycle had a bunch in stock. For our Onyx RCR, we waited about four months, which took an incredible amount of patience. While the supply chain for Onyx and other e-bike companies seems to have improved across the board, the Suron has better inventory overall because its popularity is global. So a lot of people ask us, what bike should I get? That answer is really up to your riding style. Getting something like a Suron is really dependent on where you live. A lot of the shade that's thrown at the Suron is from its reputation as a high-powered electric motorcycle that will cause e-bike regulations because of irresponsible riders. The reality is, Unless you're doing something really dumb or putting others in danger, you could probably get away with riding this on the street. However, the Suron attracts a lot of attention, more than any other e-bike we've owned. I probably get stopped like five to 10 times a day of people asking about the Suron or wanting to take a picture of it. It literally looks like an alien crash landed and then disguised itself as a motorcycle. It's weird, it's aggressive, but it's also a lot of fun and people will stare when you're riding it around. If you're like us and you want to use it for city riding, with the possibility of registering it as a moped, then the Suron X is a good purchase. Okay, the Suron exit is now assembled. We put on the other peg right there, put the front fender on. It is a little bit tall, at least from my height. I'm not very tall, so I do have to stand on my tippy toes when I'm sitting on the bike. So I think I will go for the Supermoto conversion. The next thing I'm gonna do is probably add the pedal kit, the Kaniwaba pedal kit. Outside of that, um, this thing looks pretty cool. I think the suspension is going to be really, really nice. And just, again, all these lines and angles, it looks super futuristic. I mean, this thing definitely is attention getting. You know, it still kind of, kind of looks like a bike, sort of. <laughs> Very excited to take this on the road and we'll do that next. Now, before we go into our first ride, let's go over the specs. The Suron X is a 6,000 peak watt e-bike. It's powered by a 60 volt, 32 amp hour battery that weighs about 20 pounds. The total weight of the bike is about 110 pounds. As far as components go, the Suron has front and rear suspension, hydraulic front and rear brakes, front and rear fenders, a full twist electronic throttle, an integrated headlight, a taillight, and an LED display. So now that we've covered the specs, let's take it out for a ride. All right, we finally have the Suron X all assembled. Also got a new helmet. Um, this is an O'Neill, found it on eBay. Probably not gonna do any crazy stunts, but it does have good ventilation. Feels like it matches the bike more than our retro style helmet. Uh, just made a few modifications, nothing crazy, but we changed out the grips here. Found these on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. Uh, just some mounts here for the phone, for the GoPro handlebar mirror. So this is always an important safety feature to install before you ride. And then the big mod here, I don't know if it's a mod or more of an accessory, is the Kaniwaba pedals. There's different versions of this pedal kit that actually hook up to the drivetrain. Why did we do that? I don't know. <laughs> uh, mainly because I like to have my feet up, uh, my legs up during certain turns, like one leg up, one leg down. Um, there's also sort of a brace bar over here and additional holes for pegs. So we can pop the cranks off and put the pegs on. So now this bike is sitting on 19 inch wheels and I am kind of short. <laughs> so I can't flat foot on this bike. I like to be flat footed on the bike instead of tippy toeing like this. So I am gonna convert this to a supermoto kit. We actually got our wheels yesterday. Just sitting on the bike, it feels good. I have it on the softest compression. So you could see that the bike is rebounding um, to my weight. We're gonna keep it on economy mode and just see how this feels. 
on the grass first. <laughs> So you definitely feel, you definitely feel that torque um, <laughs> right away due to the mid-drive motor. Oops, there's a bunny right there. Um, and uh, yeah, it feels good. I mean, the, the suspension is really, really nice. It's not too strong, which is pretty good. I know when you switch it to sport mode, which I'll do right now, um, you know, the the, it, the, uh, the torque is really strong, so you can't pop a wheelie very easily. So just be aware of that. I'm not someone who actually knows how to wheelie. Uh, I don't plan to necessarily. This is gonna be more of like a street bike. But yeah, it, it feels really good. It feels, it feels strong, but it also feels very agile because of the weight of the bike. With the Onyx, I think the Onyx was a little too, um, uh, it's a little heavier, right? And then you don't really get the same kind of turning radius as uh, the Suron. You know, you have these bump stops on the fork, whereas on the Onyx, the uh, the fork would slam into the the battery, the wooden battery case, which, you know, you have to kind of DIY your own bump stops. Surprisingly, the Onyx is more of a DIY bike, whereas the Suron has been around for a while. It's more of a global bike. Let's try it out on the street, see what that feels like. I'm on economy mode. So this can do uh, from zero to 31 miles per hour in less than four seconds and you definitely felt that on economy mode. Let's do sport mode here. I think what I like about the controller is that it is very smooth. You know, the, the velocity or the curve of the throttle um, is really controlled by your movements. So it's not a mechanical cable throttle, it's electronic. Uh, but it is important to, if you're on sport mode, not to just gun it because you will go in the air, you'll probably land on your back, <laughs> which is why you have a helmet on. It's really in that middle place between the Super 73, which is more of like a bike, you know, just casual bike riding, and the Onyx, which feels heavy, it feels like a motorcycle. Um, you know, when you throttle, you do feel that entire 150 pounds of the bike plus your weight, you know, moving and it's 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 exciting but it's also like you know it's not quite as agile as this you know the suspension is just really really nice you really get a lot of good rebound so now let's take a look at the rest of the specs of the bike in terms of looks the suron x is an electric mountain bike disguised as a dirt bike which stands out amongst the many moped style e-bikes that are popular right now the lightweight aluminum alloy frame is dirt bike inspired with its signature angles that are reminiscent of a bee in flight. We do like how the frame is minimal and exposed, giving it a lightweight, aggressive, and futuristic aesthetic. The Sinewave X controller provides a smooth, predictable power curve on both economy and sport modes, and can go from 0 to 31 miles per hour in 4 seconds. Range is marketed as 75 miles on economy mode, and much less on sport mode. So now, let's take the Suron X out on the streets. All right, so the first thing we're gonna talk about is the performance. Uh, there are two modes on the Suron. There's economy mode and sport mode. And um, basically, EP mode or economy mode uh, is, has a smoother transition on the throttle. And But even, even this smooth transition is pretty strong. You know, it's pretty abrupt compared to other e-bikes. Uh, sport mode is definitely, you know, has a lot of torque. Um, it's really easy to wheelie on this thing if you aren't careful. Uh, so it, just in terms of the throttle curve, it's it's pretty strong and that's due to the, to the mid-drive. Now the torque is the rotational force of the motor that's transferred into the wheel. And what's interesting about the Suron is that the amount of torque that this thing has is due to uh, the mid-drive motor. And the mid-drive motor is rated for about 6,000 watts peak um, from the 60-volt battery. So I like to keep it on EP mode 
uh, on economy mode when I'm just like tooling around the neighborhood because it's really plenty for me to be honest um, especially when you're in kind of start and stop traffic now in terms of comfort uh, the Suron is probably good for you know anyone over five seven I think it's it's a decent size I know a lot of people think this bike is too small but I think if you're over 5'7", you shouldn't have an issue. So I'm not able to actually flat foot this bike, uh, which I like. You know, I like to have that lower center of gravity. It makes me feel uh, more comfortable, a little bit safer. So that's one thing to keep in mind. Uh, a lot of people say this bike is small for them, but I think, um, you know, the majority of uh, users are probably over 5'7", 5'8". So that's just something that I noticed right away. That's a big reason why I'm converting to the Supermoto, uh, just so I can get a little bit lower to the ground. The bike is lighter than the Onyx. Onyx is about, I wanna say, 150 pounds or something like that. And this is about 110. And that's kind of a significant difference. I think the batteries are kind of similar. I think the Onyx battery is slightly more heavy, but, um, you could definitely feel that this bike is is way lighter than the Onyx. And so that makes things just a little bit more comfortable in terms of, um, you know, going over rougher terrain or even getting up to speed. I think you can, you can maneuver a little bit better. Oh, there's a little deer right there. <laughs> uh, the wheels are 19 inches, and that's kind of uh, what I mentioned about the height of this bike. Uh, why I want to convert to Supermoto to get it down to 17 inches, but it is 19 inch wheel uh, Came with uh, knobby tires for off-roading a lot of people like to switch these tires out right away um, But I don't know they're not they're not that bad even though I'm switching them out I'm switching them out for entirely different reasons, but just in terms of uh, how these are stock it's it's fine for me all right so the next thing we're going to do is the top speed test i linked up my gps and uh, i actually have the wire cut on the saran for the hot rod mode you cut the wire it kind of uh, removes the limiter but we're going to check the traffic here make sure we're all clear get around this corner see how we do so we are on economy mode right now like I said it's topping off at 30 miles per hour which is accurate now we're gonna switch it over to sport mode and see what our top speed is we're at 39 41 42 Topping out at 43, here we go. About 43 miles per hour is our top speed on sport mode. Um, now, that's plenty. That's plenty for us, to be honest. That's all we really need. Um, all right, so I actually switched the connections back on for the cut wire and we'll see what that does in terms of top speed so sport mode is limiting us at 30 miles per hour so cutting the wire gives you an additional uh, 13 miles per hour uh, which isn't, you know, a whole lot, but it's definitely, it's definitely better than being limited at 30. So just a little bit about the suspension. This does have a fast ace uh, front fork. It's an inverted fork. I know the Suron from Lunacycle comes with different forks depending on what's in stock. Uh, this one had the fast ace and it has about eight inches of travel. And the rear is a DNM rear shock that also has eight inches of travel. Again, I'm lightweight, so the rebound and the suspension uh, feels fine for me. I bet I can tune it a little bit more. I think if you're heavier, uh, you'll definitely want to be able to tune it uh, in terms of how you like to ride. But 
you know, this thing is super comfortable. I mean, I just love like, you know, kind of hitting uh, speed bumps or like curves or uneven terrain. It just goes right over it. Super, super smooth. So overall, coming from the Onyx, you know, it's this definitely feels like a, just a way more nimble, lightweight bike. I think the Onyx is really dope, you know, kind of going through the city and, and having a really interesting vintage futuristic moped look. But this thing is definitely built for performance um, and unabashedly so. This thing is looks like a dirt bike but performs kind of like a light electric motorcycle. Um, again, it's like super nimble. Like I can kind of carve in and out and it just, it just feels right. You don't realize how maybe fast you're going or you know, how much off-roading you're doing. It requires a little more situational awareness than the typical e-bike. I think you have to kind of be aware of like how fast you're going and uh, you know, that, that kind of thing. You know, like going over these speed bumps, is, you don't, you hardly feel it. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. It's a really cool feeling. Yeah, I'm, I'm really feeling this bike a lot. I think uh, compared to like the Super 73 and the Onyx, um, it's just a different, different beast. It feels like more like an all-around bike. The last thing is this bike draws a lot of attention, like big time. <laughs> People will want to know, you know, what you're riding. And uh, it's, um, you know, I've been stopped like at least 10 times riding downtown. Uh, in, in a good way. People will just randomly call out like, what is that thing? Um, or just stop and stare. Uh, I had people even take pictures of it when I'm like parked somewhere. In my city, it's pretty chill. Uh, I do have the pedal kit, the Kaniwaba pedal kit installed, so, um, and I'm not doing anything super crazy. Uh, I am doing the speed limit in the city. So even cops who have kind of rode behind me don't even say anything. So it really depends on your situation, your city, how uh, how aggressive you like to ride, and you know if if they are cracking down on these kinds of these kinds of vehicles, you may want to reconsider getting a Suron. If you're cool, you don't put others in danger, which is how we encourage you to ride, then you're you'll be okay. And uh, yeah, this is uh, this is a really really fun bike having a lot of fun with this thing. I can't wait to, uh, to mod it, to do, uh, you know, the supermoto conversion. I can't wait to put lights on this thing. I wanna do brake lights, you know, indicators, and then, you know, potentially maybe get this thing registered as a moped. I really haven't felt the urge to do that with the Onyx, but um, I feel like I wanna do it with this only because this feels like the bike I would, you know, I, I would go to to just like zip around or run an errand or two. It feels like the right bike to do that with. So here's what we like about the Suron X. It's extremely fun and comfortable to ride right out of the box. As much as we like DIYing our bikes, the Suron X feels complete and really well thought out. Since the Suron has been around since 2018, it seems to be improving each year. Also, the performance is exactly what we were looking for. Mostly city riding with a little bit of off-roading. The Suron's motor torque is way more powerful than our 72 volt Super 73 Z1 and more agile than our Onyx RCR. Converting it to a supermoto vehicle, which we'll get into in the next video, has been a really enjoyable riding experience. But let's talk about the biggest criticism that gets leveled at the Suron. Is it street legal? That's a good question with a very different answer depending on where you live. Now, unless you register it as a moped and do a few lighting mods, it isn't legal. But that doesn't mean that you'll get hassled if you ride it on the streets. It's a very gray area. And we want you to do your research in your city about e-bike regulations before you make a purchase like this. But if you're using it on private land, you'll have no issues whatsoever. With a strong modding community and support from LunaCycle, the Suron X can easily be self-serviced. In our next video, we'll talk about some of the supermoto mods we made to the Suron X and include all the links to the hardware. So if you're looking for an electric motorbike with futuristic looks and an awesome power to weight ratio, then the Suron X is a solid recommend. We'll still have Super 73 and Onyx content because the Suron complements our collection. If you wanna dive into more video and tech tips, click the links on the side and remember to like and subscribe so we can help you find tech deals that fit your lifestyle. We'll see you guys in the next video.